What's up YouTube, Dennis Panuta for Tutorials.eu. In this video, we are going to check out variables, which are a very important concept in any programming language. So let's dive right into it. But before we do that, I would like to show you some minor things about Jupyter Notebooks so that you can understand things a little better. So I'm going to create a new notebook for that, a new Python 3 notebook. And if ever I want to change the name, we know already how to do that. We can change the name of the notebook here. So I'm going to call that variables and I'm going to press the rename button. Now there are multiple options of what we can enter within one of those cells. It doesn't always have to be code. For example, print something is a code example, right? Now there are other options. We can choose them from here. So there's a drop down box here or list. If you press on it, it opens up and you can select the different versions. And what is important for us now is the heading the mar and the markdown. The code we used already, but let's have a look at the heading. If you press on heading, here it says Jupyter no longer uses special heading cells. Instead, write your headings in markdown cells using the hash characters. So here, hash or double hash is a two uh, or level two heading. So let's have a look at that. We use a hash, which is a level one heading. So this is going to be my heading one. I press shift enter in order to display it. Now I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to use a heading a, or this time a markdown. And I use double hash and heading two and then shift enter. And as you can see, this is a heading one and this is a heading two. So heading one is bigger than a heading two. But that's generally how you can use markdowns in order to use headings. But you can also simply write text in here, something like this is how you create a heading. And in my case, it thinks it's code. That's why we have this is in a green, green color. But if I change that to markdown, suddenly it's not anymore. And as you can see on the left hand side, we have the we don't have this LN, which stands for line, we don't have that anymore. So this is how you create a heading, hash and heading name, something like that. And now I use enter shift in order to display it. And now as you can see, this is simple text that you can see displayed in here. And why do I show you that? Well, if you check out the notebooks, the Jupyter notebooks that I provide with this course, you will find that there are plenty of comments and headings involved in there. So you can find that or read through that, of course, and check out whenever you like. So you don't have to rewatch the whole video. You simply can open up the notebook. If you want to check out a chapter once again, or a specific lecture, once again, you can simply read through it. If you just want to refresh what you have learned. All right. So let's have a look at variables then, because I wanted to talk to you about variables in this video. So let's get rid of some of the cells. And for example, we can simply use this cut button and that will cut the whole line. So it will cut it away. You can also copy lines and you can paste lines. So that's totally possible. So here I just paste whatever I had in the clipboard. All right. So let me get rid of that as well. Now let's go ahead and use variables and I'm going to give it a heading here, which is going to be, well, it's displaying it again, variables and hash enter. And this is going to be displayed here. So what is a variable? Well, variables are a generally essential concept of programming languages. So let's have a look at what a variable looks like. So far we have stored the number five nowhere. So let's say we printed something onto the screen. It just said print five. So we didn't store this five, but what if we wanted to store it somewhere and reuse it later on? Then we use variables and in order to create a variable, it's very simple in Python. You just enter a name for that variable. For example, just the letter a, and you give this variable a value. So let's say I want to assign five to that variable. So I simply do it like that. If I now want to print that, I can simply print a on the console. And as you can see, it prints five. That's because five is stored within that variable called a. Now we can go ahead and even use a in order to store a calculation in there. So store the result of a calculation. So let's say we want to add six to five, then we just 
enter that and we can now print the result of that let's say we print a and as you can see now we get the result which is 11 also what we can do now is multiply with each other so print a multiplied with a so i want to change that a times a and shift enter and as you can see 11 times 11 is 121 hey don't forget to subscribe and like the video now what if i want to have another variable in here so i'm gonna just create a variable called b and that's going to contain the value 5 as well very basic but now as you can see a doesn't actually contain the value 5 it was at the beginning so it had it at the beginning but then it was overridden by the value 11 and that's why it printed 11 here so the variable always is the latest entry that was given to it so the last time that it was given a value and in this case it was given the value of 11. all right so now we have this b equals 5 and what if we want to print something like 5 times 5 times 5 then we can just say b times b times b now you say okay i could have also just entered 5 times 5 times 5 and i wouldn't need this additional line yeah, uh, that's fine. Let's have a look at the result. You see, it's 125. But what if I now decide that it's not one, uh, that it's not five for B, but it's let's say three? Then I don't have to change the value three times, but only once here at the declaration. So this line here of this variable called B. Now, if I execute that code once again, as you can see, I get a result of 27. Now that by itself is already great. It saves us time whenever we want to make a change and stuff, but it's even better when we, for example, want to calculate the average of two values or multiple values. Let's say we have an age, somebody is 21 years old, and we want to have the average age of our group, whatever that group is. Is it my fellow students? Is it my uh, classmates? Is it my people at work? Or is it the football team? and I want to have the average of all of the players. Well, then you can go ahead and create a variable called age and another one called age2. Of course, you could call them something like age John, age Michael, age whatever you think of, whatever people you have in a group, and you enter those names or in there and you enter their ages into the variables. So let's say the first age is 21, the second age is 18, now, if I print the, that, if I print that onto the console, let's say I want to have the average of those two, I'm just gonna say h plus h2 divided by two. Why by two? Well, because we have two values. If you want to have the average, you simply add the values to each other, and then you divide by the amount of values you had. And in this case, we had two values. That's why we divide by two. And that will give us the end result, which is the average of the two ages. So let me display that on the screen. And as you can see, it's 19.5. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Now, what if I wanted to store that average age in order to use it somewhere else? Maybe I want to display it on multiple different spots in my application or I want to print it on multiple spots, then I can simply go ahead and create a new variable called average underscore h. And I'm gonna assign h plus h2 in brackets divided by two. And that will store the average h. So what we had before printed onto the screen, it will store it within that variable. Now, if we print that onto the console once again, so now we print the average age onto the console. What we will see is we get this 19.5. So the value that we calculated earlier on was stored. And how did we get this value? Well, we got it by using two other variables. So you can calculate around with variables. And that's just a simple example of what you can do with variables. Variables are super powerful and very important. And you could store so many different information in there. And that's why we will look into variables a lot and we will use them plenty full. And yeah, that's pretty much it about variables for now. So why don't you play around with values that you think of yourself, create a little average calculator for your family maybe, where you take the age of all your family members and then you calculate the average of your family ages. 
And well, in general, just play around with values and variables that will help you to get a better feeling for it and will make it easier for you to move along in the course. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, then leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, if you really love the content and you would like to have more of it or pretty much all of it, then of course, check out the link in the description to my whole course. See you in the next video.